I'm going to use this simple little diagram of the heart uh, to demonstrate and, and walk through, talk through the blood flow through the heart and the body. Notice this diagram is just a simple square divided in four, just like the, and it represents the human heart. Uh, something to remember, a couple things to remember is that we're looking at this anteriorly, so we're looking at the, at the front side of the heart. We need to remember that the right side of the heart is actually on our left. The left side is on our right. So remember, you're looking at the front of this. Um, the chambers, the chambers, I like to keep them straight by, by looking at the chambers and what they do in pairs. So there's a couple ways to look at the pairs um, of the chambers. One is to look at the top, which isn't a scientific term, but the top chambers, which are the atria. The atria are the blood-receiving chambers. The lower chambers, in the human body anyway, are the ventricles. These are the pumping cham chambers. The order of blood flow through the chambers of the heart is always into the atria, then pumped to the ventricles, and then out of the heart. So it's always atrium, ventricle, out of the heart. Atrium, ventricle, out of the heart. So breaking down the chambers further, now that we know which one is the atrium and which one is the ventricle, we can just simply label these as being the left atrium, the left ventricle in the lower right, the right atrium, and then the right ventricle. Now having those individual chambers identified, we can now look at the right side of the heart versus the left. The reason that's really important is because one of the sides of the heart deals with the oxygen-rich blood, and we'll, for that, we traditionally in the circulatory system, a cardiovascular system, use red to show the oxygen-rich blood, and in the right side, oxygen-poor blood. So let's take the left-hand side of the heart, and remember the left-hand side of the heart is going to handle oxygen-rich blood, blood that has just been oxygenated at the lungs. So remember, atrium, ventricle out, blood is going to enter the left atrium through vessels called the pulmonary veins. Okay, Veins always travel toward the heart. The pulmonary vein, by the way, is the only vein in the body that actually is oxygen-rich. More on that later. Remember that it's atrium ventricle out, so from the atrium, blood is going to be passed into the ventricle. When the ventricle contracts, it's going to pump blood out of the heart to the rest of the body. That vessel is going to be the aorta and that's going to send blood back to the body. So it can be taken to all of the tissues in the body to supply them with oxygen. Now a couple of things, again remember atrium, ventricle out. But as we pass from the left atrium to the left ventricle, it goes through one of the particular valves. Remember the heart valves are things that prevent backflow of the blood. But on the left hand side of the heart, the valve is called the bicuspid. When the blood passes from the ventricle and out into the aorta, it has to pass through another valve, and that valve is called the aortic semilunar. Aortic semilunar valve. So again, on the left-hand side of the heart, in through the pulmonary vein, through the bicuspid valve, when the ventricle contracts, it goes out through the aorta, through the aortic semilunar valve. Now there's more to the anatomy of why they're called semilunars and why they're called bicuspid valves, but we'll save that for later. Now the direction of the arrows that I have in this diagram, it's worthy to note too, that I've got them kind of, kind of in an anatomical correct direction. When the blood is pumped from the ventricles, it actually goes superiorly or up out through the top of the heart or what's called the base of the heart. On the left hand, or excuse me, on the right hand side of the heart now, we'll switch to the oxygen poor side. Now again, it's still always atrium ventricle out, so blood is going to enter 
the right atrium from the vena or the vena cava. And now there's a superior and an inferior vena cava or a pre and post cava in the sheep heart. But the blood is going to come back from all of the body tissues through the superior and inferior vena cava. So it is oxygen depleted. All the body tissues have already used it. Just like on the left-hand side of the heart, the blood is going to be pumped from the atrium down into the ventricle and from the ventricle back out in a certain direction. So we have to talk about the valves on the right-hand side of the heart. The AV valve, atrium, ventricle, or atrioventricular valve, the AV valve on the right-hand side of the heart is called the tri cuspid. I remember tricuspid on the right hand side because this little R always tells me that. There's an R in tricuspid. I remember that's the one that goes on the right hand side. As the blood travels from the ventricle back out of the heart, it's going to also have to pass through another semilunar valve. And this one happens to be the pulmonary semilunar valve. This is going to be the val or excuse me the vessel that's going to take the blood out of the heart from the right hand side is the pulmonary artery now just like the pulmonary vein in the same way the pulmonary artery it carries oxygen poor blood because it's actually going to go directly to the lungs where it can then exchange blood at the capillaries or exchange the oxygen for carbon dioxide so if you remember to break this into two main parts, it should be pretty easy to remember that it's the atria that receive blood and the ventricles that send blood. So the path through the blood or through the heart is always atrium, ventricle, then pumped out. The left hand side carries oxygen rich blood. The right, or excuse me, the left hand side, oxygen rich blood that has just come from the lungs. So think about it, it's gonna go from the lungs into the heart so it can be pumped to nourish all of the body cells. On the left hand, right hand side of the heart, it is oxygen poor blood. The blood here is coming back from the body tissues. It's been depleted of oxygen already. It's carrying oxygen or carbon dioxide so that it can go atrium, ventricle, and be pumped to the pulmonary or to the lungs through the pulmonary artery to exchange the carbon dioxide for the oxygen. You should stop, you should review, look at this video a number of times, slow it down, uh, but I think it's a good handy simple diagram, or at least I hope. It's one that's always helped me out to remember blood flow and the pathway through the body.